Well, to discuss further, we're joined via Zoom by Nzali Matebula, lecturer in the Department of International Relations at the University of Johannesburg. Nzali, good afternoon. Thank you for your time here on the ACBC. I believe you're on mute. Nzali, if you can hear me, please unmute yourself. I am just going to start off with the first question on the back of um, what we've heard from our senior uh, reporter, Kaili Shekumalu. Russian President Vladimir Putin will, in August, in essence, be attending the BRICS summit. And I wonder how you'd weigh in on how South Africa should proceed, considering the fact that there's a warrant of arrest now out for him. Uh, perhaps also South Africa is a member of the ICC. Are we legally obliged to arrest Putin? Uh, well, uh, considering that after the warrant was issued, I could say that um, South Africa is seeking all ways to avoid the execution of the warrant. Uh, this is because, um, as you heard, Minister Naledi Pando stated that they would actually want a resolution, a mediated resolution, whereby they engage both countries towards a peace resolution. Therefore, this has really uh, pushed the country to seek legal action on how they can actually circumvent executing the warrant itself. Thank you for that context. I think as we look at the consequences that South Africa is likely to face if it does not affect and arrest um, Putin, um, how would you weigh in on that given the shift in ge shifting geopolitical dynamic? President Sol Ramaphosa has already been caught in the crossfire between Russia and the United States following the military drills that just happened last month. Yes, uh, so uh, in South Africa, taking such a neutral stance, obviously it had some harsh criticism uh, that came from one of our prominent or many of our prominent uh, trading partners like the USA and the European Union, with some of the major banks in the country actually criticizing on this. However, I do believe that they are being diplomatic as much as they can because where they are, it's a really compromising uh, position that they are put in. Thus, seeking this neutral stance would actually they're trying to make it work uh, for everyone at the same time. Let's, However, there are consequences. Yeah, no, absolutely. I actually even want to hone in on the ruling party to date. We look at South Africa having been at odds with the ICC um, when the ANC resolved to withdraw from the body, which um, it had accused of targeting African leaders. We know that the party then changed its tune last year, opting to review its decision to withdraw. And in view of what's just transpired, is the ruling party silence anything to go by at this point yes that is that is very true so now uh, i do understand where it comes from when it comes when it talks about the withdrawal of them or, or the ict actually targeting african leaders because i could say that a crime actually uh, it, it depends on how you define a crime thus mm -hmm. it, it is very contextual therefore I, I do believe that south africa is taking a neutral stance because um what the West might believe is a crime is not what Russia sees as a crime or even what South Africa would consider. And considering that um, we, would, we are in BRICS together with these countries. Yeah, absolutely. It actually leads me to my next point because the opposition uh, command in chief, uh, Julius Malema, argued that the ICC had failed to act against Western leaders. You know, even going on to name former British Prime Minister Tony Blair, former U.S. President George W. Bush, even Barack Obama, just based on the definitions that constitute to war crimes. Um, you know, he, he also came in to say that um, Bush had evaded Iraq without reason whilst Obama had killed Libya's Muammar Gaddafi. The EFF is also on record to say that the Russian leader is in fact welcome in South Africa. How would you respond to those sentiments also pervading? So uh, one thing I can say is that uh, international relations itself, it, it has some state of anarchy, but at the same time, international law can be very, um, it is aspirational, that's what I can say. Uh, it is aspirational in the sense that uh, in implementing international law, seeing that it's international, however, it has to be implemented in a nation state whereby uh, it, 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 it has to align with a set of rules and regulations and restrictions within that country. Therefore, um, it becomes really tricky. So we find that international law is, is a bit aspirational, so as it can be really applied to each and every country. Hence, you, hence you find certain countries don't actually uh, recognize international law itself. Mm -hmm. Thus, um, I would agree that, yes, um, with um, 
the EFF leader to say that it can be really contextual at times and contradicting because of the nature of uh, international law itself. Thus, what would I say? I would say that um, crime actually lies in the eye of the beholder. So what you consider as a crime, that's how you should prosecute it. And Zali, your point about international law being aspirational is interesting, seeing as um, you know implementation is key because and I was reading about um, the Kremlin spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov, who, you know, obviously immediately upon the, the um, warrant of arrest being issued, came out to declare that the charges were in fact null and void. His point is that, you know, Russia was a non-ICC member and therefore Russia has no legal obligation to ultimately respect the court's process. I wonder how you would respond to that also, um, whether Putin should be concerned about the ICC's arrest warrant. Is this a declaration of war? If um, the rest ensues, what, what politic, geopolitical dynamics unfolding there? Well, yeah, that was my next point. I was coming to that to say that Russia is not a signatory of uh, the Roman statute of the ICC. Therefore, the moment in international law, you don't recognize the law, therefore you don't have to oblige with it. Thus, as the, um, the, the spokesperson of Russia's foreign ministries says that Russia is really not obliged it is in vain for them to actually issue out this warrant of arrest because Russia is not part of that ICC Roman statute. Therefore, it doesn't really apply to them. That is the nature of international law. And so, as we know, I just want to perhaps wrap things up and look at the way forward. We know that the South African government is scheduled to host a delegation of Russian ministers next week. Um, this is for meeting on the two nations joint um, Intergovernmental Committee on Trade and Economic uh, Cooperation. And, and in lieu of what's happening, what do you think is likely to be discussed? How will South Africa balance the conundrum of appeasing international law, but also, you know, its commitment to, to the BRICS nations at large? Well, I would like to say that um, this is the second, um, I think this is the second ICC warrant of arrest that was issued to South Africa to arrest the head of state. And before it hasn't happened in 2015, where they were ordered to arrest the Sudanese um, president, former president, Omar al-Bashir. Therefore, if they couldn't do that, then I don't think there would actually, there would be any warrant of arrest or they would execute this. But at the same time, with the given time, from now until August, I do believe that they would seek uh, cooperative ways to deal with this, whereby they will take this mutual stance and uh, try to find a resolution between both countries towards a peace resolution in order for them to actually, um, in order for them to um, embrace the cooperation between BRICS and Western countries so that they don't ruin any relationships that come with their trading partners, whether yeah. geopolitically or, yes. Just, just very quickly um, to wrap up, we saw international tribunals in the past. I was reading about how they focused previously on violent attacks against civilians and other alleged crimes committed on the battlefield. Have they adjudicated, you know, a, a case of this nature, um, particularly with them, with regards to the crime that Putin is now charged with, um, which is obviously based on Russia's legal obligations as an occupying power. What do you think, um, you know, is being reflected there? And, and ultimately, do you think Putin is, is ultimately going to, to end up at The Hague? Okay, so uh, can you kindly please repeat the question? All right, so early on, we were speaking about the context under which war crimes are, you know, issued. And I was just looking at past cases about how the international tribunals, you know, they've mostly focused on violent attacks against civilians. And I wonder, given the crime that Putin has been um, charged with, you know, it's uh, legal occupations ultimately as an, as a, as an occupying power, how, you know, th this case has now come to the fore. And, and, and given what is happening, do you, do you foresee him ultimately ending up at The Hague? Okay, so um, with them focusing on violent crimes, uh, I do believe that is contextual. 
why do I say this? Because war crime is happening all over the world, uh, especially in Africa and some of the countries like in your um, in your DRC, in Mozambique. However, it is all contextual. So what I'm saying is sometimes a crime is considered because a war crime because of where it is happening. That I, that's what I would say. Yes. But then uh, in certain cases, it's not really um, taken into consideration. All right, Nzali, thank you for your time on the SABC um, for contextualizing, you know, what has transpired to date. It's been about a week since that arrest war warrant has been issued by the ICC. Nzalo, Nzali Matebola, lecturer in the Department of International Relations at the University of Johannesburg. Uh, just on the back of uh, what International Relations Minister Naledi Pando has said about the department awaiting a refreshed legal opinion on extending the invitation to Russian President Vladimir Putin to attend the BRICS summit that's set to take place in August. This, of course, is on the back of that IICC arrest warrant that was issued last week Friday.